not on right now. Can you discuss the concept of choose yet again and how we accomplish that? Is that is that the end point of our studies or is it something that we do continuously and how do we do it? How do we get there? What does it mean? Uh, if you ask your question, you can direct it to one of us so, oh. so we can look at each other for a moment and <laughs> just let us know. I was asking or both. Both of us? Both, both, yeah. Okay. okay, well choose once again. It's like this world is like the tiny tick, the tiny man idea just repeated over and over and over again. And one of the uh, clips we showed the other night on Sunday night was a movie called Waking Life. Where oh, that movie. It's so spectacular. I think uh, Richard Linklater put it together and, and at the end Richard Linklater is actually in one of the scenes where he's at the pinball machine and the main character says, I keep having these false awakenings, you know, but I, I keep, I think I'm still dreaming, but I want to wake up. And then he kind of gives the whole story of like, like really, time is just saying no to God, like, are you ready to be one with me, with universe, with, with eternity, and everyone's saying, like, no, thank you. So we get this opportunity to choose once again, and more on the level of, we could say, the miracle, we are constantly getting opportunities to choose once again, from the wrong-minded perspective to the right mind. So it seems like the choices can be personal, like we're choosing as human beings, but it's actually you know, as the Course says, the script is written and we're, it's really, we're learning how to choose again with the right mind and really choose the miracle. And eventually, when we get good at that, we can say we become more consistently miracle-minded, then finally we reach a point where, as Jesus did, we can choose the atonement. And that's like a final choose once again. And then, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> After that one. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, the final section of the text, uh, choose once again. Uh, of course, it, it always comes back to forgiveness. And what you're choosing between is the body or spirit, which is why that final section, choose once again, starts off with that definition of temptation. It starts off by saying, temptation has one lesson it would teach in all its forms, wherever it occurs. It would persuade the Holy Son of God, he is a body, born of what must die, unable to escape its frailty, and bound by what it orders him to feel. And it says, you know, would you be this if Christ came to you in all his glory asking you but this? Uh, choose once again if you would take your place among the saviors of the world or would remain in hell and hold your brothers there. And for he has come and he is asking this. And that's the choice that we're always asked, you know, to make. So then it says, you know, learn them the happy habits of response to all temptation with these words, you know, I am as God created me, his son can suffer nothing. And I am his son. What can suffer but a body? You know, that's why it always comes out, you know, what are you going to see other people as being? A body or spirit? And whichever one you choose is what you think is real, as it also says in that section. That's a dynamite section, wonderful section you know, of the Course, and Jesus really kind of puts it all together there. And we're asked to choose once again every single time somebody pushes our buttons or we're worried or something comes up that we need to forgive. You know, we choose once again over and over again until the ego is completely undone. And then, you know, as David said, you get to the point where you choose once again for the final time. That's the beginning, not the end. You know, it's like uh, the last quote that uh, Arden Purcell had me use in Disappearance. Jesus says, help me now to lead you back to where the journey was begun. To make another choice with me. You know, so you completely undo the ego and eventually you end up back at the beginning. And Jesus said the same thing in the Gospel of Thomas. You know, have you found the beginning? Because where the beginning is, the end will be. And so it's like it all fits together and you choose once again for the final time and then the ego is undone and you know, as David said, you're out of here. You know, it's all over. And uh, that's uh, what we're working toward. But uh, the cool thing about this particular path is that you can have a good time on the way. You, know, you can have a really good time. So uh, you, know, you can have your cake and eat it too. You can have a good time now, and you're still going to awaken in God eventually.
David, I'd like to ask this question of you. Um, how should we address entities? Um, Jesus cast out entities several times. And how do we look at these? Please. Okay. I think when we talk about casting out entities, we're talking more about evil entities? Uh, yes. yes, evil entities. Okay, kind of like the, the story from the Bible about, you know, chasing the, them out of the, the people and onto the herd of swine and into the, into the water, that kind of thing. Yeah, you might say that, um, that you could think of entities in the most helpful way, I think, as, as attack thoughts in consciousness uh, that need to be cast out of the mind. In other words, uh, Jesus says, uh, when you're offended, you know, in anyone, uh, pluck the offense uh, from your mind. So we could apply that, this is kind of more of an extreme, extreme case uh, when, when it seems to be evil entities or so forth that you're confronted with or whatever. But, um, but in one sense, this, this is about purifying the mind and letting go of, of attack thoughts. And that's actually the way to enlightenment and healing, you know. I am not a body, and my mind cannot attack, so I cannot be sick. Part of that recognition of my mind cannot attack is to purify the mind of all these attack thoughts. Because they can't be our real thoughts. The Course tells us that we've got this, you know, layer of thoughts that are egoic, and then underneath them are our real thoughts. The thoughts we think with God. And so, you might say that the, this is a temptation uh, to believe that illusions are real, you know, perceiving evil entities. And then, how you answer that is very important, you know. You need to see it as a call for love, and not as a, as a thing of fear. And then, in that sense of joining with the Holy Spirit and Jesus in that, you are able to answer the call for love.